I've recently upgraded my phone by the way. This is my cat right here. It's called Simba. It's actually my younger brother's cat who doesn't live with me, but uh, yeah. It's the first animal in the family, so very excited about that. Adorable. It is a Bengal cat. Anyways, I used to have the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus and this is the S20 Ultra. Love the camera feature. It's just that lately, nowadays, I don't use my phone for YouTube, Netflix, or anything like that because I live in my own house now and I watch it on my TV or my computer, so things have changed. But uh, yeah, it's a very cool phone, but we're not here to talk about my phone. Um, yes, we are going to design what I am going to design, and I hope you guys do it with me. And mobile or an app, whatever you guys want to call it, I'm going to design it in Adobe XD, so let's go ahead and do that. Hey guys, what's going on? My name is FlyMMD and I'm a UX UI designer in Toronto with over 13 years of experience. And like I said before, or before the intro, that we are going to design a UI on Adobe XD, mobile or app, whatever you guys want to call it. And it's going to look exactly like this. Obviously, I have designed it before. Um, I did do a desktop version of this. Uh, it's a fusion of Crunchyroll and Netflix in my previous video so if you guys want to go ahead and check that out and learn how to do a desktop version link is obviously in the description below so let's go ahead and design this together first thing you have to do is download creative cloud desktop on your you know mac or pc because inside the creative cloud you have all of your adobe softwares um, acrobat indesign xd lightroom uh, photoshop illustrator so on and so forth so in this case we are going to design on Adobe XD so let's click on this one right here pops up like that on the right hand side is the user profile left side is obviously the logo um, this here is a news feed it's not really that important and all of these design files is our recent designs that I've been working on for, for the past couple of weeks months things like that if you have the creative cloud service a paid service you can save all of your design files in there and you don't have to save it in your um, computer or Mac right so that, I think that's a great feature that they have and I think I have a space of one terabyte so I don't really have to worry about you know emptying up my storage at all I think that's a great feature that uh, Curve Cloud has recently come up with majority of the time I would like to customize my size but that's more of an advanced level since this is a beginner tutorial video let's make this as simple as possible for you guys to understand so let's click on the iPhone and, and obviously there's a drop down link here you can play around with. I am going to go with the, the Pro right here and then boom. As you can see, it automatically provides the iPhone Pro X, uh, XS, you know, Pro size right over here, which is great. It is already selected, which means I can adjust the size if I like. And you can do actually many things. You can also adjust the size over here on the right hand side where it says transform you can do a lot of stuff you can even change the background color which we'll get to later um, you can have the grid activated you can change the, the color of the of the grid to something much lighter because i hate that green color now on the left hand side when you click on this hamburger menu there are a lot of options this will take some time to get used to Obviously, the more you use this software, the better it is for you. You can create a new file. You can open, open from your computer, open from your Creative Cloud. You can download UI kits. They have amazing material design and wireframe kits, which you can use for your projects. Obviously, as you can see, this, it's something that I use on a daily basis. Um, you can also save your work on your Creative Cloud or your local computer. You can check for spelling mistake. I love this feature because, you know, on top of this you can save your work I'll show you guys how to do that at the end you can also download plugins say for example if you have a lot of text in your design and you need to fit in that um, paragraph setting they have a plugin called lorem ipsum you can get uh, user profile images there's so many great plugins that Adobe XD offers for designers like us help I never used it so I don't even know. After the hamburger menu there are a few errors. Very simple. If you have been using Adobe for a long time, say Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, you will be familiar familiar. You will be familiar to the um, icons that they provide. First off, the arrow 
obviously you can move the artboard you can move the text images um, objects so on and so forth you can also resize it by using the arrow it's going to be your go-to favorite um, tool and then you have an object which is great to create you know boxes and import images in there pretty pretty cool stuff S um, same concept with this and then you also have that and then you have line obviously which we will we'll use for breaking in the content that's a good uh, that's a great tool so let's select all these and do this for a second pen tools not something that I use on daily basis it's more of if you need to adjust any UI icons I think pen tool will come in handy it's more for vector designers I mean I don't know feel free to play around with this uh, the most important tool or the third most important tool is your text you can type whatever you want as you can see uh, you can also you know enlarge the text whatever you want to do with that Okay, now this right here is creating an artboard. You can customly do it like this, or if you want, you can click on the artboard on the right hand side. As you can see, Adobe XD has provided mobile sizes, tablet, desktop, even social media. This is a new feature, by the way, and watch. I never used that. I have used social media, desktop, not so much with tablet and mobile. Yes, my favorite feature. This is just a zoom in, zoom out, you know, Tool. Um, also, if you just place your mouse on top of it, you can see the keyboard shortcut. As you can see, that's Z, that is A, that is T, and so on and so forth. Now, over here is what you call the library. Any objects or elements that you have saved as a component, it could be, it, it will all be here. So, text, colors, um, objects, etc., etc. This right here is your layer. So for example, if I do that and I do this, as you can see, these are now layer. I can also click and drag them at the bottom by adjusting which one, which, which object or layer will be on the top and at the bottom. And this right here is to discover plugins. So like I said before, you can download um, Lorem Ipsum, UI Faces, never really did that personally. Um, they have they have so many great features. You can browse them. So let's do images. Uh, yeah, see as you can see, they have user profile images, etc., etc. It's great to explore this feature here. I think you guys will love plugin. I personally don't use it that much. I'm kind of old school. For the new designers out there who have been designing this year or started last year. Um, discover plugin will be a great feature for you guys so now let's begin what we're gonna do now is embed or fuse the Netflix UI and Crunchyroll's UI Crunchyroll is actually a website if for someone like me who is used to who not used to who loves anime I think Crunchy, Crunchyroll is a great website um, to watch any anime from old to brand new I'm currently watching this one right here if you are interested yeah as you can see i love this anime and then and and also god of high school yeah so this is not a paid it is not a paid sponsorship video i just thought it's cool to share okay so what i'm gonna do first is i'm going to double click on this title right here and let's just name it something small app that's it you can name it whatever you like just for fun i'm going to do app that's number one number two is I'm going to click right here and just for me because I'm going to delete this later I'm going to save this local so let's go ahead and do that I have already created a folder called AppXD uh, let's do that and I'm going to country roll app I'm going to save that delete okay always 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 save your work very important you never know okay so that's done and secondly, what I'm going to do is I will go on the right hand side under appearance, 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 appearance. I'm going to click right here and change the, the color to black because that's the background color that I want. And also add the grid back on. I don't want the, the grid to be too strong. So let's fade it as much as possible. 25 is great. Now we are going to work on a background image, which I want to be blurry. 
and then the actual image on top. So let me show you what I'm talking about. My mouse here is selected to this, um, what do you call it, a select icon already. Now I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to select, say all the way up to here. And let's just bring it up here. I don't want the border. Let's just do this for a second. It doesn't really matter what color I put the object on because there's going to be an image in it. The best way to import an image is I have my folder where I have my images. As you can see, all of them nicely organized. I have text and then icons, anime logos, my files, so on and so forth, so on and so forth, so on and so forth. But let's get to the image right now and, and we'll go over the other folders eventually. So what I want to import is this guy right over here. Okay, this should be great. I'm gonna click here, click on the image, press Alt in my, in my PC. So, and, I, and then just drag it out just like that. And I'll tell you why I did that in one second. So let's focus on this, on the first image right now. Uh, right here, blur, a background blur. I'm gonna click on that to object blur. As you can see, it gives that blurry background. Let's go ahead and increase this and center it. This line right here that you're seeing right now, it helps me understand what is the center point so I know exactly where to place my image, text, etc., etc. So let's increase this a bit more. Uh, I'm just going to put it like this for a second and I think five should be good I mean you could even do like 30 right so in this case let's just do five um, let's decrease this a little bit to something like, I think 55 should be great okay and then I'm gonna click on bl blend mode go all the way at the bottom there are a lot of options here as you can see I'm gonna click on this right here Kind of gives it that nice black and white. Let's move this a little bit more. I'm going to create control, which is command for Mac users, and L, which will automatically lock this image. So now I cannot move this image whatsoever. This gives me an opportunity to place any layers I want on top of the locked layer. So in this case, so I can just, you know, even if I do like full select, it's not going to capture the one that is locked. Um, let's follow the grid light right here and decrease it to something like that now if i double click on the image as you can see i can have the opportunity to move the image around let's go ahead and make this to i think i would, I would want to do this to let's do 330 okay that's great and i'm going to click on this icon right here which will automatically center it in my object in my artboard actually sorry and let's make this to let's do 250 nope i don't like that let's do 450 oops 450 that should be good and we can uh, click on any of this objects right here or we can go right over here you can either do them separately or all of them at once so let's just do all of them at once Let's click 20. As you can see, all of the sharp edges is now round. If I want to see this design in the prototype mode, I can click on this tab right over here, or as you can see, Alt 2, boom, the grid is gone. Pretty much everything is gone. That, that does not need to be in my artboard. So this is how it's looking so far. And now let's create a drop shadow on top of this image here. So let's do the same thing, object, Object is going to be your go-to tool, man, like 100%. Let's remove that, the border, click on fill, obviously black. I'm gonna click here and click on object blur right over here. And as you can see now, that this object is now, has has now become a shadow, I guess. You can, you can call it that. Now, because this layer I've created just now is going to overtake this layer right here. By overtake, I mean on top. What I can do is two things. Number one is place it where I want. Click on this object, control X and control V, and now it is on top of the shadow layer. That's number one. Number two, 
is what I can do is let's just get rid of this grid for a second so you guys can actually see it. Is that I'm gonna click on the layer panel and I'm gonna click on this one here and just drag it like that. And now it's behind the image layer. You, you could do it that way. I personally hardly do it that way. I do the control V, control X thingy. So which is a thousand times faster. Okay, now what we're gonna do now is we're going to add the logo. So let's go back to my folder, click on anime logos, and I have the logo right here. Now before I place this logo on top, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock this layer here, zoom right in, and activate my grid for a second and then click on this edge right here hold shift and just increase it to this should be fine because this is svg it gives me the opportunity to delete or actually customize the logo i think that's a better word of saying it and now let's go ahead and work on the fonts okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click and zoom right all the way in i'm going to press T because that's text or you can just click on it whatever is easy for you and I'm just going to write text let's make this white right here fix the font adjustment uh, let's do I have a lot of fonts so as you can see um, you can download fonts from Google fonts the majority of it are is free and that's how I get that's where I get my fonts from send the type to semi bold let's do 15 and I'm gonna click on this font right here and try to adjust it with the logo I'm gonna select both of these objects here and click on this icon right here as you can see it is now properly adjusted and now I'm um, I will click on open grid and do at least three of them you can also fix the spacing just by doing that as you can you can just click the gap in between and just adjust it you can click down as you can see it's duplicated and you can just play around with it as much as you like and check this magic out I'm going to go back to my folder click on text where it says nav I will click on the nav um, file by the way I've created this in notepad and those of you who do not have notepad I don't know where you get it from Mac but for PC I've been using notepad for more than 15 years anyways uh, yeah so you create your list in notepad you save it dot let me show you how to actually save it make sure it's dot txt okay so now I'm gonna click on that and drag it on this right here and automatically everything that I have in my notepad I'm just going to shift minus drag that like that okay so TV shows movies my list TV shows movies my list is automatically in here so I don't I didn't have to create three text files and then type in manually it's just a nice click and drag that's this is an awesome feature of Adobe XD and then I can just ungroup this for a second I would like to move this where the image is and then click all of this and this one right here once I click on that it will space them out properly I'm just gonna duplicate this guy right here and shift it slightly this way so you can so the users can see that they can you know you can just click and uh, drag it to pretty much find the next enemy I'm going to click on my folder again go back to images and let's pick this one over here and drag it to boom if you know what I'm saying now let's work on a title and a description what I'm gonna do is I do this cheap tr trick is I'm going to click on my existing text alt and click it right over here let's put this and uh, let's do that again let's write this this is called the anime cowboy bebop if you guys haven't watched this this anime it's quite old school I think I watched it when I was probably like 15 years old awesome anime uh, let's do 25 25 sounds great and to make it bold this one here let's just put it regular 
and 15 should be fine, I think. Let's get some text here. Let's try Japanese. Not too much. And have them. I can increase and decrease the line spacing in Adobe XD. It's automatically set as 20. So if I put, say, if I type 40, boom, it's huge. If I press negative, type negative 10, very close. I can also click on it and press the down arrow and it will adjust it. I can also hold shift and it'll go really fast. Uh, in this case, it was 20, I think 20, 20 should. To begin, I'm going to click on the artboard, just drag it up. Cause I've never, cause I have no idea how long this is going to be right now. So I'm just gonna leave extra space at the bottom. This blue line, someone told me in the comment, thank you so much for answering in the previous video. This is pretty much, the blue line indicates what's going to be below the fold. It's a cool feature, but I still don't understand why am I able to adjust the blue line. Anyways, I don't think it's important. I don't know why they have it again. It doesn't make any sense. So what I'm gonna do is work on the CTA right here. So let's click on this object, or you can press U and just click and drag it right here. Um, let's do 150 or you know what? 155 should be good. Okay. And I'm going to have the edges. I'm thinking 12, oh, 12 too much. Let's do 10, perfect. I'm just going to lock these two objects like that. Or if you don't know how to do a shortcut way, you can just right click and click on Where's the lock button right here? Lock right here. Obviously on the right hand side, size, side, you can see all of the tool shortcuts. It's better to learn the shortcut. It will save you a lot of time when you are designing. Now the best way to change the color is I am just going to press I, click on the background right here, and it has already changed. Um, I'm going to increase this to 20. Move it right here. And I'm going to import an icon right on the side here. By the way, all of my icons, if you do not know by now, I get it from the Noun Project or Icon Monster. So for those two websites, I'll have it linked in description below. They are 100% free, but feel free to donate if you like. That'll be great. I'm gonna click on the icon here. Things too big. I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. I group them together, select both object, right click and group or control G. I'm going to select the background object and click on this one right here. Zoom all the way out, prototype. And as you can see, the call to action has been created. Now what I'm going to do is take this guy, move it right here, change the color to white, or I can just click right here and change it to whatever I want. Make sure all the icons are saved as SVG because it gives you the opportunity to modify the icon and you can select the icon plus the text and change the colors at the same time. If it's uh, PNG, it's not gonna happen. So extremely important that the icons are always and logos are always saved as SVG. Okay. I'm just going to decrease this by 15 and I have to apply another icon, a bookmark, click and drag it out there. I'm just going to select this one here, delete that, zoom in and change the color to white. By the way, you can also save all of your colors just by clicking on the plus sign and it will appear at the bottom. So if I click on the black one, it appears on the bottom. So the reason why this element here is important is because majority of the time, well actually all the time, uh, when you're working on a project, you have to comply with the brand guidelines and therefore they have specific colors which needs to be added into the UI uh, design. So therefore, if, for example here, if it's a specific color like something like this, you know, you don't have to look for it all the time. You can just save it like that. And if you want to remove it, just click on that and just drag it out. See, very, very cool. And now I'm going to click on the background image, unlock it and just extend it maybe halfway in like that. And maybe 
just maybe move it around something like this okay. Okay, uh, that's fine. And put a place it right here, just in case. I'm going to group this and group them together. Put it on top. Same thing with all of this. It's nicely faded to the black, to the to the black background. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we need to work on the content, obviously below, down, going forward all right all right all right first off i'm going to lock this layer or object whatever you want to call it at the bottom and i will take this font and shift it all the way here oops see what happened i just got a little bit too excited right over here should be good the spacing sh let's worry about that in a later yeah let's worry about that later i'm going to write that i'll go in a circle object and hold shift if i click on this this lock icon here it means whatever i type at the top will automatically be at the bottom so the so the height and width is the same if i don't do that and i put this and i change this into 200 as you can see the height remains the same so very important to know that change the border color uh, to red for now and put three that should be great now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on repeat grid and have it extended all the way across like that play around with the gap so what i'm going to do is i'm going to resize this object and, and i don't have to click on all three of them i can just click on the first one and go back here lock it and put 165 or i think it should be 160 160 cancel and all right so far so good now what we're gonna do is you know i've been saying we a lot lately because i hope you guys are designing with me or else i'm just a crazy guy who just keeps saying we and there is no we and i'm going to select here let's select one two and three go right over here boom and now we're going to add logos on top of it so Let's first off adjust it to very close to the title. Save your work. Go back here. Go to anime icons and click and drag right here. And adjust it by holding shift. Zoom in and make sure it fits between the image. Something like this is great. Bring a little bit to the bottom here and add a little bit of shadow behind the icon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the images, lock it. I'm going to select the logos, group it together and unlock this right here. Drag it down. Control V, Control C. Take the logos bring it back control x control v or you can obviously do it by using the layer uh, change the size something like that so here is a great example of what i've mentioned earlier why locking objects or layers is a good idea the logos and the images are officially locked which means i have this background object right here which I can play around with. If I select all of them, the only element that's going to move is this one, which is blue. So I can take this and move it around and pretty much do whatever I want. Click on this icon right here and pretty much pick the color that's more relevant to the logos. So far, so good. I hope you guys are following me, like I said. And if you guys like this video so far, please give it a big thumbs up. It will really help me create more content that are similar to this especially in adobe xd so i hope you guys are enjoying this ride we are almost there so let's go ahead take a deep breath <sighs> excel and let's go to round three in the bottom contents here yeah, i'm going to double duplicate this dude right here place at the bottom we will worry about the spacing at the end once every category has been cr cr created so this will be trending now and we're gonna go back here, create an object. Uh, let's 
let's do 160 20 I think this should be fine now we need text so let's duplicate this one here and write anime name 14 should be good let's zoom in for a second and make this one 12 and duplicate again because I want to add a year we are going to make this guy semi bold for now and let's change the color for these two actually you know what let's create another object for a second let me get a little bit small here yeah? uh, this should be fine this should be fine let's adjust it like that select a color for this should be fine Okay, now what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to select the text, the object, and this object right here. I'm going to group it. Actually, I don't need to group it. I can just select on repeat grid and have it go all the way across like that. Okay, so I hope you guys know what I'm about to do right now because it's about to go down. So I will, I will go back to my folder and click on text. Go to trending now. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna import these enemy names in there. So like that and like this. Also the seasons, let's go like that and do that. Click on one, Gundam Wing and Trigon, or Trigon, whatever you wanna call it. Bang, all the images have been impeded. If you're focusing here for one second, you can see it says number five and also it will also say number five there which helps me understand the the distance between this and this which needs to be same so adobe xt really helps me helps me on that and now we're gonna go back and select this object here again and just bring it all the way down oops where you go go and bring it all the way down here go back to locking this select all of these three group them together Control x Control v as you can see now it's at the top let's just group all these images as well at the same time why not i'm going to lock this image i'm going to lock the text i'll go back to selecting where you where you go right here and let's move it up for one second something like that should be fine lock it Control x Control v at the top and you can just place it something like uh, this congratulations by the way if you have made it this far that means you really want to be a great designer so give yourself a pat on the back and let's begin round three i think right one two three yeah i think it's one three we are going to just do the same concept here and put it at the bottom so just take all of this right here and bring it down should be something like that, should be fine. Let's repeat grid it all over like that. And now let's go ahead and change the content. So let's go to control originals, go right here, bam. So far so good. And change the seasons, it should be great. One, two, and three, there we go. Click and drag, all the images has officially changed. What we're going to do now is select each category here. Yeah? We're going to select this. We're going to select lock, unlock, make sure everything's perfectly locked and unlocked. Let's go locked and unlocked. Boom, boom, and boom. Let's bring it everything. Let's just bring a little. Ugh. Let's bring everything a bit closer. Do you guys notice how close I? Like go into my, my screen so bad so so bad we are going to the object right here how many times have i said object in this video so we will go like that i think the best height for our bottom nav is oh i almost like you got it right i think it's 75 so let's go ahead and zoom remove that click on maybe a little bit darker i think this should be fine Dark. oh it's whoa 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 this should be fine okay perfect uh, i'm just gonna ungroup this for a second because what i need what i need is a text put this on top go 
go up and this should be fine. Two, three, four, five, and put it something like this. Sticky nav import boom. Much better, yeah? Much better, yeah? I'm just going to lock this layer, import all of the icons that I need. So let's go to home. Uh, what else do I need? I need more. Let's get rid of all of this text. And I'm going to select all of the icons and turn them into white color. Okay. Watch this. Boom. Now they're all white. Okay. So. I don't personally think that there's a shortcut to do this quicker. That's why I like to just do this manually. Okay. Perfect. Sticky nav icons are has been completed. Let's select all of these guys, group them together and unlock this layer for one second and select everything and make sure they are properly centered like that. So now let's complete this video by creating the final icon. Let's do 65 on this one. Remove the border and let's go ahead and adjust the colors a little bit darker. Yep, perfect. A little bit down, maybe up to here. All right, and add the final icon, which is this guy right here. Now, I don't have to do this to make sure that it fits this um, the the circle object, which is right here. I can just select both of them together, click on this right here and that, and boom, it's perfectly um, aligned in that object, and that's pretty much it. If you want, you can add a little bit of drop shadow, very, very small, and uh, you should be fine. I think so far, so good. That's it. That is it. Congratulations. You have successfully created an app on Adobe XD. This is a huge deal. So if you have started with me from the beginning of this video and all the way here, congratulations. Pat yourself at the back. I am extremely proud of you and I'm also interested to see what you have created. Just comment below with the link, create a Dropbox account or whatever is easy for you and send me the link. I would love to check it out. I'd love to give you my feedback. If you have faith in the problem, please let me know. Comment below and if you liked today's video, please give it a big thumbs up. The desktop version of this has already been uh, created in my previous video. So link for that is in the description below. You can download my Adobe XD file for free. So that is obviously in the description below. And I hope I was able to help you guys out. And until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.